National Hockey League was expanding from six teams to 12 teams. And I said, really? And I said, that's very interesting. So I realized that if we had a hockey franchise and we already had a basketball team and there was really no arena of any consequence in the city, the Sixers, they really didn't have a home. So I thought it'd be fantastic to put an arena, plunk it down on the parking lot of where the football stadium was being built. So very quietly made the application. And it was done in a very short period of time. There was a meeting in Montreal in which every team had to give their $2 million for the franchise cash. And I got it. I was in Philly because I was scrambling till the last day to raise that $2 million. We had to wire the money to Montreal. And on that day that we had to wire the money, it was the only blackout in the history of Philadelphia that I recall. We couldn't wire the money. Our banker called a friend, another banker in New York, and on his word, wired the money from New York to Montreal. I was 33. I was scared to death after Hockey News voted us least likely to succeed and everybody said the history of hockey in Philadelphia, which I had not investigated, was horrible. As it turned out, I think of the six new franchises, we've been consistently the most successful. We were playing in the first round against St. Louis. St. Louis pulverized us and I said, look, we're an expansion team. We may not be able to skate with the big teams like Montreal at this particular time, but we don't have to get beaten up, and I never want another team of mine to get beaten up like that again. And we drafted a bunch of tough guys. We drafted Bob Kelly, Dave Schultz, who was known as the Hammer, and probably the best fighter I've ever seen in hockey, you know, Don Selesky, and we became the aggressors. And, uh, you know, after all, if that's what they allow in hockey, that's what we're gonna do. So it sort of established a reputation that we still haven't lived down. <laughs> I was the only Jewish kid in a very tough neighborhood and I had to fight my way through it. The first few times I got beat up after that, I was pretty good. I maybe broke 15, 20 noses. Down deep, I think my dad was proud. <laughs> I moved to a nice neighborhood. <laughs> and my career was over, thank God. <laughs> he was an anomaly. I mean, he was quiet, he was very different, but he knew how to coach and he knew how to motivate players. One day after a, a loss, he spoke to the press. I said, you know, we lost the game, but you know, we had five, five key guys out. You never mentioned that. He says, I, I don't want to mention that. I said, why? He says, I never want to give the players an excuse to lose. When we Went to the sixth game of our first Stanley Cup. He put on the chalkboard, win today and we will walk together forever. And everybody's walking together to this day. We did fairly well the sixth year. We won a playoff round for the first time. Seventh year, we won the cup, which nobody's done since. You know, in seven years of existence, to go from nothing to a Stanley Cup was pretty remarkable. It was the most mind-boggling feeling. The game itself, one to nothing, I'll never forget the parade. There were two million people at that parade, and almost all of them had flyer t-shirts on. Lou Scheinfeld noticed that a lot of people were not standing up for the national anthem in the building. And so he decided to shake things up one day and he put a recording of Kate Smith's God Bless America on and we won. He selected the games when we were gonna play and the record was phenomenal. And then when we got into the playoffs and the finals um, through with her agent, he was able to secure for a small fee, not a major fee, her to come in person. And she was very reluctant to sing in an arena. And she sang and the crowd went crazy. And she says it was one of the great experiences of her life. And every time she sang, I got goosebumps.
I had no idea that I was creating a character for the city, but it's what happened, and it was really exciting. I mean, you know, we, we became known as like a blue-collar town that really appreciated blue-collar type athletes, and, and it was all a love affair between ourselves and, and the people in the city of Philadelphia, and it was just, it, well, it still is, really, but it was so exciting in those days. I love this town. First of all, I think it's the greatest sports town in the country. I love the people and I couldn't be more thrilled to be a Philadelphian.